You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Sully. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I think we're at Tim Wakefield number of days. Uh, I think it's 49 days till uh, opening day. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was Mookie Betts, but sadly, Red Sox fans don't celebrate that anymore. Uh, but thank God they got under the tax threshold because that's what fans love to know that billionaires save some money. Um but yeah, this is uh, the season's right around the corner. And I heard you on your last uh, podcast with uh, Paul Holden from um, uh, Locked On Rockies, and we were, we were saying that it's like it seems like the World Series just ended, and it also seems like this off season's gone on forever. It's this wonderful contradiction. Yeah, it really is. I was thinking about that last week. Because it feels like Aaron Judge signed so long ago, and mm-hmm. now it's like, oh yeah, no, they're all reporting to spring training next week. When how did that happen? I, I gotta say one thing again. This is locked on MLB, locked on Yankees crossover. Everyone seems to complain when the World Series bleeds into November. No one's bitching and moaning about the Super Bowl being played around Valentine's Day. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, no, this is too late. It's too late. We're going to get to the point where the Super Bowl is going to be played in March and it's going to be, you know, wherever they are, it's going to be 70 degree weather, whether it's the Northeast or <laughs> Florida. I mean, yeah, I was going to say it could open up for other venues. I mean, part of the reason it had to be either, you know, here in Pasadena or in, in Tempe, Arizona or wherever was because, you know, it wasn't snowing. But if you know, if we're going to play it late enough, I'll have it outdoor in Minnesota. Why not? What's, what's stopping us? I do remember before they, or no, when they announced that it was going to be a MetLife, I said on Twitter, I said, watch when it's at MetLife. It's going to be like 55 and sunny. And it was 53 yeah. and overcast. I a was blizzard so the close. next day. Yeah, yeah, was, it was like a blizzard the next day. And I was, I was so dying. Close to the right thing. Yeah. I was dying for it to be snowing on the cast of the new girl or whatever the, the, the or they, they fill the, the, the stands with uh with the celebrities of the tv shows yeah um you this is of course best laid plans are going to be thrown away but i do want to bring this up because you and paul were talking the other day about you know there's he's fine with the expanded playoffs and i am as well but i think that with the expanded playoffs i think we need to reduce the number of games in the season I think yeah. because, oh yeah like go back to 154 maybe I, I, I would go even back to I would be, I would go back to 144 you know I would yeah I, for for this reasons one of the reasons why they expanded the playoffs um in in the truncated season was it was only 60 games we all know that's not a good of sample size so you had to open it up a little bit because they make it a little more fair one of the things that made the randomness of the baseball postseason, seem equitable was that so few teams got in so they made it through the gauntlet so if you had a situation like a you know the phillies beating the braves in 1993 or you know or in i mean in 96 the orioles beating a much better cleveland team to get to the alcs to play the yankees you could deal with that because it took 162 games these these were the these were the only these teams get in so yeah. You know, it's easier to stomach. But if we're letting in, you know, the three division winners and three wild card teams, you are, you know, we saw the randomness leading Philadelphia to have a pennant winner. I think it would feel more equitable if, I mean, I've been screaming to end the regular season on Labor Day for over a, over a decade. Yeah. And so you have the baseball playoffs mainly in September and the World Series the first week of October the way it so, used to be <laughs> yeah the way you know but then you have August being the pennant run yeah and then September being playoff baseball and then the World Series played in October seems you know at least you know it's being played in baseball weather yeah because it know? is funny you know you and I like talking about games from the past and when I look at old games from the 80s and I'm clicking on like mid October. And I'm like, Oh, it's already like the fourth game of the world series. I completely forgot that they're still not in, 
the beginning of the National League or American League series, a championship series at this point. They're already almost past the world. Like, they're almost crowning a champion at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, when, when it was just the World Series, I mean, remember the playoffs, the playoffs would start in late September. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, at I'm, I'm, I'm really trying not to be old man Sully here, but I think what this does is I've been saying that August is a wasteland. If you're, really if is. you have the pennant drive in August and you have September before football really kicks into high gear, you know, a lot of people stop paying attention to baseball around Labor Day. Yeah. So it's kind of like, why are we screaming at the tides? And it's you know, funny because well, I'm the type of person I don't pay attention to football until baseball's neither. over. <laughs> well, I mean, me neither. I mean, I'm you, but you and I are outliers yeah. in that. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't pay attention to any other sports. I was like, you right, know, I, mean, I don't either. Point. Yeah, but we're the outliers on that. Most yeah. people, once people get back to school, once people get back from their vacation, they're focusing on football unless the local team is in there. Yeah. I mean, the different, I mean, here in LA, New York is a little different because New York is a little more of a baseball city. But like in LA, if the Dodgers aren't in it, no one cares. Right. When I was, up although in the that Bay, hasn't been a problem the last how many years now? Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But I've been here when the Dodgers weren't in it. Yeah. And, but even when they get eliminated, all right, you know, like the, you know, the, like when there was Atlanta, Houston in the World Series or, you know, getting anyone excited about houston philadelphia in the world series just it was non-existent yeah. same thing in the bay area when every other year the giants were in the world series it was a frenzy and those other years where they weren't in it tumbleweeds right you know get them interested in royals mets you know <laughs> you know i mean it just was it was uh but like i just think that 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 baseball you know Baseball is a summer sport, not to, to, to paraphrase the mayor in Jaws. I mean, they need summer dollars. But I, I keep going back to 2017 when both the Twins and the Rockies were wild card teams. Now, they both got eliminated early, but there was the possibility of an outdoor World Series the first week of November in Minneapolis and Denver right. was there. And right. Yeah, I wanted to see that. <laughs> That's yeah, we I'm wanted me. a snow out during the, uh, exactly. instead of a rain out, a snow out during the, the World Series. The boys of summer, and they're making a freaking snowman. Yeah. I just look at, we, we are going to talk Yankees in a second, but I was, but I just, this is, I think that if you also, you shorten the season, you're going to have fewer injuries. I think you're not going to be, you know, I really think a lot of times those last month or so when you see these teams stagger to the finish line. Yeah. Oh, they're it's, exhausted. They're exhausted, and the, and the rotations. Everyone's not. You know, everyone's cutting the pitchers off at five innings. So every bullpen is exhausted. Yeah, it's not just Jonathan King. Everybody's bullpen <laughs> is just haggard by the end. Yeah, it's true. Yes, yes, it's, of course it's true because I speak the truth. AC <laughs> got Sulius, and I will just tell you that I think that if they have a shorter season. I think it's, I think it's a surefire bet that fans will be super into a pennant rot drive in August, and you know I think you'll have a lot more interest in some stuff. Yeah. And by the way, if you're making any bets, let me recommend FanDuel. That's our new partner, Stacy Gottsulius. We got a new partner, and the only app you're going to need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about this partner, it's Locked On, because of the number one sportsbook in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. There's so many great features that make bet betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57. That's this year's Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just want to make sure. Uh, with a no sweat first bet, you'll get up to three thousand dollars back in bonus bet if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads for the who will score a touchdown. Now, FanDuel's, FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, super easy to use. Best of all, you get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. 
That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Sing that song with me. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I wasn't told we were supposed to sing. Okay, you didn't get the sheet music? Mm-mm. I was going to get the little, <laughs> the little <laughs> tuning thing there. Yeah. Um, Stacy Gotsoulias is here from Locked On Yankees, and we're all better for it. Um, the AL East, I think this is the third uh, year in a row where I'm going to pretty much say the same thing about the American League East, and that is I think it's going to be a scrum. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh-huh. Last year was now, – now, I have to give – and you know this is not easy for me to say. Mm-hmm. I have to give the Yankees credit because, again, they they won 99 games. They won the division by a week. They had seven games. They had a week buffer, which yeah. meant they could line everything up. And they – yeah, they had, a, they had a first half of the season where they were on pace to say, 1998, ha! We're the greatest Yankee team of all time. But nobody thought that, and everyone knew they were going to come to earth. They had that really lousy, like, August, six, you know, six-week stretch pretty much from the All-Star game to the end of August. Yeah. And then – Pretty much from the series where they beat up the Twins around Labor Day to the end of the year, they basically were the team that everyone thought they were going to be. Right. Which was a pretty good team, definitely a playoff team, flawed. But, you know, I thought they were going to win like 93 games. And they, if they played like they did in September, that's probably what they were going to win. They just had such a great first half where everything went right. Yeah. Um. So going into this year, um, I I have my thoughts of what I think, but I want to hear without me uh, without me sullying, if you will, your uh, your point of view. Um, tell me what you think about them and and their thoughts going into the uh, uh, going into this year. Hmm. Well, it's weird because you know I joked about it with Paul on the show the other day that. You know, when we did our AL East roundtable last year, mm-hmm. most of us picked the Blue Jays to win the AL East. And um, we figured that it would be Blue Jays and then Rays, Yankees, Red Sox kind of bunched up. And then no one expected the Orioles to do what they did. I mean, right. you know. No. And the way that it worked out and the way it finished, um, you know, the Yankees did luck out from that. Um, start because they lucked out because the Blue Jays were pretty much mediocre for the first half of the year. And mm-hmm. then they picked it up toward the end and made right. things interesting. If the Blue Jays played the way people thought they were going to play in the first half of the season, it would have been a different story. The Yankees still would have been as good, but they probably wouldn't have done as well against the Blue Jays as they did mm-hmm. because, you know, toward the end, you know, the Yankees were beating up on them pretty much until a certain point and they finished 11 and eight against them, which is nothing to sneeze at. But I feel like going into this year, I'm disappointed that they didn't make more moves. Um, You know, obviously judge coming back is big, getting Rodon is big. Um, You know, the, the hole in left field kind of scares me, but not really because they can go from within. And then if things don't work out and there's, you know, the Yankees aren't going to be bad. They'll just no. be going into the all-star break and they'll have the option to maybe trade for a left fielder if things aren't working out the way they want them to. And I think Cashman said that too um, during the off season. He kind of gave us a hint that they weren't really going to go after a left fielder <laughs> during the off season was talking about down the road, maybe a trade will happen. So, yeah. you know, I'm not terribly disappointed, but I was really hoping that the sweep against the Astros would have lit a bigger fire under their collective rear end. And it was big enough for them to get Rodone, but I was kind of hoping they'd be like, you know what? We have Steve Cohen outspending us by all this money. Who cares about the luxury tax? Let's go after someone big for left field. And they didn't do it. So that was slightly disappointing. But seeing how they did last year, seeing how certain people stayed healthy, seeing how certain people didn't stay healthy, and if they do stay healthy in 2023, it could be just as good or close to as good as they were in 2023 i mean the rotation is frightening if everyone stays healthy and people pitch the way they think they're going to pitch i mean a top three of garrett cole carlos rodon and nestor cortez (laughs) right uh by the way i need to ask this question because i honestly don't remember 
Um, because sometimes, you know, in the post, sometimes in the off season, especially come spring training, there's more like, oh my God, I didn't know he signed with that team. Like, so you get reminded, is Tyon back? No, he's with the Cubs. He's with the Cubs. He signed a four year, okay, $68 okay. million dollar deal with the Cubs. Yeah. I, I have the page where that. I think Tyon signed with the Cubs, but yeah. am I wrong? Because mm-hmm. there's, there's sometimes there are players like that, like, fold within the same like you know you, you forget wait wait did he do it or that's okay okay yeah. i'm not going crazy tie on no you're gone okay. not in this instance uh, you're not going crazy okay well okay but um <laughs> I, I i'm going to be positive and then i'm going to be not negative but uh uh have my skepticism mm-hmm. uh the positive is the nanosecond they were if they had if judge had gone this would have been a disaster Oh, sure. Because obviously Judge had a historic <laughs> year last year. He also was the only person playing well during that slump. Can right. He imagine, played well the whole year. Yeah. I mean, if any, and beyond his stats, obviously going, obviously Shohei Otani is an all-star pitcher and an all-star player. You have to be a historic level player to wrestle it away from. Guess what? Someone was. Right, because it yeah. wasn't just the home runs. When he wasn't hitting home runs and he was going, I think the most he went was nine games without a home run. But when right. he wasn't hitting home runs, he was hitting doubles. He was hitting singles. He was driving people in. That's why his average was as high as it was. Because His, own, his on-base percentage was in the 400s. Yeah, I mean, he was unbelievable last year. He was, was carrying the damn team. He really was on his big, brawny, 282-pound yeah. back. And, you know, and you <laughs> consider that, you know, yes, Stanton played well at times. times. He did, but... But for the most part, he had a down year. Yep. Um, Rizzo, again, hit some big home runs down the stretch and everything. Torres did well at some point. But there, nobody else, I don't look at any of the players on in that entire lineup and say, ah, that's an elite, you know, at any right. point. Right. And, um, you know, Donaldson was a mess. Kind of Falefo should have been DFA'd. Um, and <laughs> you got a discipline, you know, uh, LeMayhew had a disappointing, you know, year and Hicks was hurt for a ch- big chunk of the time. Um, there is a player who is not an acquisition this year, but kind of is, which is Harrison Bader. Yeah. And that you're going to have, you know, Bader, what did he play like one game? How many games of the regular season did he play? It yeah, it was wasn't like, it wasn't it was like many a week and a half. It yeah. was like ten games or something. But right, he was impactful. It it was he was playing fourteen games for them. Yeah, but he and was impactful right off the bat. In the, the bat. playoffs, he was great. Yeah. He was fantastic. It was, yeah. I uh I was talking about it with who was I talking about this with? Jason Buse Buford was a guest on my show. He writes for Rolling right. Stone and other publications. And he was saying it's so nice to watch a center fielder actually set his feet before the ball comes to him. Yeah. He's like, it's been a long time since the Yankees have had someone that good playing defensively in uh, center field. He's like, he's a pleasure to watch. I said, yeah, in those in that small sample size, I was like, if we see a full season of healthy Harrison Bader, because he doesn't have to hit home runs. He can just slap singles. And as long as he gets on base and runs around, it's perfect. You saw what you were going to get with him in the playoffs. Yeah. If you get that for a season, that's like an acquisition. You're going to yeah. have him for a full year. Yeah. You know, so that I mean, I don't discount that as a positive. Right. Um, and I also really don't discount Rodon. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think Rodon is necessarily uh, a Cy Young contender and everything, but he's a damn good pitcher. Oh, sure. And yeah. Garrett Cole is a very good pitcher. And Cortez, again, if we're seeing that that wasn't a fluke, we saw that the year before wasn't a fluke. So now we can sort of say, OK, he's now put together two solid seasons. So, you know, you go one, two, three. Very good. And so now Severino, who did legally change his name to, if healthy, Louis Severino. Yeah. You're not asking Severino to be your number two or three starter. Right. I mean, that's why the Rodon signing, whether he's the all-star or just a very good pitcher, you're you're taking that pressure off of Severino. Yeah. So these, these moves are not in a vacuum. Yeah. You know, having Bader for the full season, all right, I'm not sure we have an in – left field you have Bader in center and judge in right you could find Joe bag of donuts to play left field get someone who is non-tendered bring someone up from Scranton I almost said Columbus and I think they or someone's going to jettison a left fielder well they have Oswaldo Cabrera you know they had him playing out there and they they had him playing at a bunch of um positions and and he's watched some YouTube videos about how to play the outfield so that should be fine (laughs) 
Um, my soon to be co-host worked with Scranton last year. Um, he did radio for Scranton last year, and he mm -hmm. said between Oswaldo Cabrera and Oswald Peraza, the two of them are two of the most chill people you'll ever meet in your life, and they're just how you see them on the field. And Oswaldo Cabrera is just happy to be there, and he will do whatever he can do to help the Yankees. So he's not a bad option in left no. field. I don't mind that at all. It's just... I kind of wanted a little more effort from the Yankees, but hey, if they're going to stick him out there and he does well, because he had a bunch of outfield assists when they had him playing different positions, I'm for that. And that mixed with a full season of Bader. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I am impressed by their off season in that, you know, keeping Bader for the full season, the, the, the ripple effect of having another starter that you don't have to worry about. Right. You know, I call it the John Garland effect. It yeah. doesn't, you don't need to have him be a star. You just need to know every five days he's pitching. You don't have to worry about it. Plus, Radon is one of those guys where his uh, velocity gets higher as he goes through. And like through the third, um, the t third time through the order, his velocity is like two miles an hour higher than it was the first time through the order. And I'm kind of looking forward to that because usually it's the opposite where a guy right. kind of tires out and the, you know, the hitters know what to expect from him. But I'm looking forward to watching him work. And with Judge back, you just know. I mean, you you. It's basically saying this is what we're, this is the centerpiece. They made him the captain. That there's no messing around. Right. There's no, you know, this is they're not going to be. You know, he playing. set the record. Now he doesn't have to worry about it. And if he only right. hits like 35, 40 home runs, we're fine with it, Yankee yeah. fans. Right? Yeah. Yes, we'll be fine. Absolutely. So you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that. So now you can just focus on the main thing. Now, um, I do have a couple of things that I uh, have some thoughts about. Uh, that's not me being a Yankee hater. It's just me pointing out some reality things. But before we do that, I want to say to you, Stacy Gatsoulias, are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Uh, yes, and what, because what, I need to stick to my New Year's resolution. So, yes, you tell me more. You and me both. Well, I get something you probably have never heard of. It's called a Built Bar. <laughs> For those no, I've you, never heard of them. Yeah, if anyone have ever uh, uh, taken a peek at the direct messages amongst all of us uh, hosts, we talk about Built Bars all the time. Now, look, mm. we made it through the holidays, but we have a new gauntlet coming this weekend, which is a double barrel Super Bowl. Oh, my God. You know, big Super Bowl parties. And, oh, my God, everyone puts out the Valentine's candies at work. You got you to gotta make it through this gauntlet to stay healthier. But if you don't want to compromise on the taste thing, you got to try Built. Built Bar is, they're actually healthy and they're tasty. They're so delicious. Uh, you won't even think that they're good for you. And what makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right. You heard me correctly. Real chocolate. Great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I don't know how Built Bar does it. I've asked. They won't tell me. They taste like a candy bar while having great, amazing macros. They're, they're 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of fat, and like Carlos Rodon, their velocity goes up later in the game. <laughs> now, you don't have to wait around to get a box. We used to love that, right, Got Gatsoulias? Getting that box coming in, it's like, oh, here come our build bars. You don't have to do that anymore. You gotta, you're near a Sam's Club. Head over to Sam's Club or, or Walmart. Go to Walmart, go to the pharmacy section, Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You pick up a four-bar box, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs. Buy Sam's Club. Get a 13-bar box. I'm going to eat one of those 13-bar boxes a day. That's good for me, right? Brownie batter. Churro. You know what? You can just thank me later. What, what are your favorite ones? I really – the cookie dough puff. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, really it's good. so good. It's really good. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, and it really does taste like you're eating something that's not good for you because when you bite into it, you, you think to yourself, how is this possibly healthy for me? It's just too good. But, yeah, that's my I, – I think that replaces my mint brownie. Yeah. As, yeah. It's up there for me. I'm still I still love the raspberry because I did I love that the tanginess mixed with the chocolate. It kind of almost has a jelly donut quality to it that's really fantastic. So Right. But it doesn't matter. No matter. They're, they're great. And go get them. Go to Sam's Club. Go to Walmart. Or keep ordering them in. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But I am going to tell you what to eat. 
and that is Built Bar. And Stacy, sing it with me. Built Bars, they're still good. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm not here. singing. Okay, fine. Don't. I sing on my own show sometimes, but I'm not. I know you do. Today. That's what I thought I could bring in, but I, I, I got to sing in the, the sheet music. Yeah. Where was Stacy Gatsoulias? Um, let me tell you, I, 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 there are two things that would make if I were a Yankee fan. Yeah. I want you to imagine that scenario. If I were a Yankee fan, a yaddle, little, 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 dumb. That's right. I played Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof. I was the greatest Irish Italian Tevye in the history of high school musicals. I think my parents went to see Fiddler on the Roof during a, a date night, if I'm not mistaken. My mom told me. And well, it's a great yeah. show. It's a yeah. great show. And I was a great Tevye. But um, here's the, here are the two things that make me um, nervous. First yeah. of all, and we alluded to this a little bit, that last year – the Blue Jays first half, they were thoroughly mediocre yeah. and they started playing to the back of their baseball card by the second half. And they've made, granted, the Teoscar Hernandez trade, which Ruth Capulis is still grinding her teeth over. Um, <laughs> but they they gave, they, they fortified their, their pitching staff yep. in a way that they, di- obviously when we saw they des- in the Mariners when they came from behind in that insane clinching game, they yeah. needed to fortify their their staff, and they they did exactly that. Um, and if just a couple of those players, like you know, like Guerrero, just start to play closer to what we're expecting, you know, a lot of things went wrong, and they were still a a ninety something win team last year. Right. Um, the J the 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 Tampa was decimated with injuries. The team yeah. that lost to Cleveland in the wild card series, it was a mash unit. I mean, I didn't, even, I didn't know who half the players were. Some of them yeah. were younger than my sons, and but they still made the playoffs. Right, and they're getting Glass now back. They're getting Glass now back, and they're bringing back like they re-signed Yandy Diaz. They've kept a couple players. Like, oh, hey, we're going to keep a couple of these players. We're going for it, thinking right. they're closer to the team that won a hundred games lat in twenty twenty one than they are the team that sort of stumbled and bumbled their way into the into the playoffs last year and so the competition you know i don't think you can get that seven game buffer the red sox are a mess and the orioles are shooting themselves in the foot after a a year where they won their fans back now they're doing everything in their power to alienate them but you know i think still think it's gonna be a three-team race i think the yankees could very well win but the thing that i would be nervous the most about is the bullpen because You got a great first half out of Clay Holmes. Yeah. And the the history of baseball is littered with guys who had one really good year as a closer and then fizzled out. No offense to Clay Holmes, who is a talented pitcher and has been a good reliever for a few years. The idea of him being an all-star closer again, he was thoroughly mediocre the second half. Yeah. I'd still, I'd still prefer to have mediocre Clay Holmes over a Roldis Chapman. Well, yeah, but that's not, you know, you know, he's now being his awful self with Kansas City right now. Yeah. But yeah. you know, King was great when he was healthy, when he was when he was pitching. But like the first half, their bullpen depth was fantastic. Yeah. And. It well, was, yeah, my, it was losing fine Michael, the second but, half. No, but, but losing great. Michael King was a really that was I think that was the biggest blow. I mean, Chad Green mm-hmm. also, you yeah. know, because he was hurt too. But Michael King was a really big blow to the bullpen when they lost yeah. him, and just the way it happened, you were thinking the absolute worst with the way his arm looked when they were taking him off the field because you could tell right away when he threw the pitch something horribly went wrong. Um, but they're expecting him to be back. He might miss a little bit of the first part of the season but you know it's not like he, they're expecting him to come back in july so right. um yeah the bullpen is a little questionable but the the rotation with those top three and severino if healthy at four you also have guys like clark schmidt you also yeah. have domingo herman you know like schmidt can even be in the bullpen if you need him to be where you can have uh Herman as an extra starter if you need him to be there um I'm not that worried yet and then okay. that's another thing maybe if the Yankees by the all-star break the bullpen is kind of sputtering a bit and if someone is out there maybe they can do a trade before the deadline so 
it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, you know, Chad Green's with the Blue Jays, but he's right. coming back from surgery, and it's you know. Did he pitch at all last year? I think he only yeah, pitched like. Yeah, he did. Um, okay, I don't. I honestly don't remember him pitching. I'm last trying year. to remember when he got hurt because you know the beginning of the 2020. Oh, I have it up season. here. I remember he pitched like 14 games. What? Yeah, Harrison, I mean, Harrison was... Bader played 14 games. Chad Green pitched. What is it with these 14 game Yankees here? Yeah. Unbelievable. Right. Well, you made you made a great point there, and maybe um, you know, maybe this has something to do with it. Is that um, you know, you, you by strengthening your rotation, it take it puts less pressure on the bullpen. Hey, by the way, you know, I said like I I couldn't remember. I thought James and Tyon signed, but I couldn't quite remember. Um, is Frankie Montas still on the team? Uh yes. Yeah. Doesn't that say a lot that we've been on? We've been talking for half an hour and break, talk, having, going in depth in the pitching staff, and his name hasn't come up once. It's because I forgot. Like I was in my head as I was naming everyone. I'm like, there's another. Who am I? For, I'm forgetting someone. Who am I forgetting? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, he would be the number five, and that's not a bad number five to have if he stays healthy. Because his problem is the shoulder, and he's going to miss the first. I think they said month of the season. Mm -hmm. So if he can come back and, you know, if they use him as a number five, you know, that takes pressure off him as well, because I know it's a big deal coming over from the A's to the Yankees, but if you're coming over from the A's to the Yankees and they're not expecting you to be the ace, yeah, it shouldn't be so bad for the guy. So yeah. I'm just hoping he, when he comes back, he remains healthy because he's another one. If he's healthy, him and Luis Severino, if he's healthy, he that's a not a bad number five to have. Yeah, he's a good pitcher, and, and and I'm going to say something. A lot of times, people who turn who were good pitchers and maybe coming back, a lot of times those starting pitchers turn into decent relievers. That yeah, you know, I mean, the obviously the biggest example of that would be someone like Andrew, you know, Andrew Miller went from a struggling starting pitcher to an all star caliber. He was great. Reliever. I loved him. I did. Yeah. I, lo I loved him when he was on the Yankees. He was great. I loved and him I also when he was loved on the Red Sox. Him. I was when he was with Cleveland. Yeah. I loved him when he was on Cleveland and he gave up that home run to Greg Bird in 2017. That was great. Terrible. Terrible. Great. We all, we all um, cried. The, the only run we of the game, cried. too. The only run cried. of the game. And unbelievable. Of all people for Greg Bird to hit a home run off of. It's like. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken about that game, because those the the Yankees lost the first two games, including the game. The, the come from behind game. Yeah. And if I miss, if I'm not mistaken about that game, maybe I'm mixing up games three and four in 2017. Yeah. I always conflate it, them as well. Yeah. One of the games um, judge leaped up and stole a home run. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I, I think, I think that, uh, I think that was game, the, the one nothing game. Yeah. You know, Cause if that ball went a little higher, you know, all of a sudden the chances are Cleveland who I thought were rampaging to the world series. That yeah. Year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause I saw, I went to a double header. They played like a quick three game series. And then like one of the games was rained out. So they had to do a double header and I was at a double header and Cleveland just beat up on the Yankees, like the very end of August. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw them matched up against them in the playoffs, I was like, Oh yeah, there's no way the Yankees are going to win this series. And then especially with the way they get, they lost game two. I just thought, could you yeah. just win one game? Just win one game. Don't get swept. That's all I wanted. And then, yeah. you know, game five happens and Still can't believe that happened. Thank you, Dee Gregorius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but against yeah. Corey Kluber of all people, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was weird too because it was so sad. It was so I, sad. Dee Dee hit that first home run, and my anxious, like my anxiety, I was just like Ugh. it. When I was like, oh my god, they're gonna win this game. That was after the first home run. I just became so calm. I'm like, no, they're winning this game. I'm feeling it right now. And then when he hit the second home run, I was like. They're really going to win this game. I can't believe this is happening. And from there, then on, completely yeah. calm the whole rest of the game. Now, Brett Gardner's at bat was a little nerve wracking just because it was like 12 pitches. Yeah. But, oh, man, I miss the 2017 team was so much fun because no one expected them to get as far as they did. Aren't those <sighs> teams amazing? I was talking to someone about, I mean, for for me, the, for me, it was the 99 Red Sox. Yeah. That, I mean, they wound up losing and you know some some Sox fans were talk about the blown calls but they also Red Sox just they, they were Pedro and cross your fingers 
right. you know, in the rotation. But because of that, and again, similar game five, they were down 2-0 to Cleveland, and they went into game three with Pedro and Nomar Hurt, like going like, this is not even a team anymore. Right. And they somehow won those two games, and it was our – Didi Gregorius was Troy O'Leary. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Troy O'Leary hit a grand slam, and it was either a two- or three-run home run. Because And both times they walked Garcia Parra to get to him. Mm-hmm. Because, again, they had lots of players like... He took it personally. You know, they had lots of players <laughs> yeah. who could mash as platoon players, like Mike Stanley or Troy O'Leary or Reggie Jefferson. But Nomar was the only legitimate star in that lineup. Right. All, no offense, John Valentin. Um, and uh, and they kept pitching around Nomar. Yeah. And Troy O'Leary kept homering off of him. And that was the game where Pedro came out of the bullpen and threw six no-hit innings out of the bullpen to, to clinch it. And, um, you know, if they could have – you not use Pedro in that game. Pedro could have pitched one of the opening games at Yankee Stadium, right? Instead of you know, instead of being only used in Game Three, that's and that would have I, totally changed the series because that's the only game the Red Sox won. I re- I remember that. I mean, of course, I loved that team because that was so overachieving, like the 2017 team yeah. for you guys. And I just remember that that ALCS thinking, if you could win just one game at the Bronx. And know that Pedro's pitching game three. So, like, worst case scenario, it's 3-2 Yankees going back to the Bronx where you kind of, you, you know, maybe you pitch Pedro in short rest or whatever it is. But, like, there was, like, you got to win one of these two games and there's a shot. And they lo- they were up 3 nothing in that first game. And they went into extras and Bernie homered. And then, I don't know if you remember this, but in game two, um, it was Varitek and it may have been O'Leary. I can't remember who the other one was both hit balls that hit the top of the wall mm. that would have been a game tying home run. And neither one of them got driven in. And twice that happened in the same game. If those were a little bit, a little bit higher, yeah. but, you know, then Bernie hit the walk off in game one. And in my heart, I knew, Oh, that was the one that was the game. Mm. That was the game they had the shot at. And then, you know, and of course, I, I probably said this, everyone, just bear, bear with me, but like, um, you know, Mendoza killed the Red Sox that year. Absolutely killed them. There was mm-hmm. two games where they used him instead of, and, and Mendoza closed the series out. Yeah, he, he did. Couldn't, I watched, couldn't I watched that game the other day. <laughs> they couldn't hit him. And, yeah. and, and El Duque won the MVP, but I kept thinking it should have been Mendoza. I know Mendoza mm-hmm. only got eight outs the whole series, but they were the biggest eight outs of the series. And, Oh, and when he came over and he didn't pitch well for the Red Sox, when he played for the Red Sox, there were Red Sox fans saying, he's a sleeper cell. Oh, yeah, we he's called still... him the embedded Yankee. Yeah. The... When it, yeah. <laughs> but I, I I may have told you this story already, but it's this, this does crack me up that El Duque was a Red Sox killer. He was the MVP of that series. He pitched in that clinching game. He was unbelievable. And he always... You know, he was a, he was a Red Sox killer. And he was the only Yankee of that era that I kind of liked. Right. Because he was mysterious. Yeah. You know, there was something El Duque had an undeniably cool quality to him. Yeah. And that like, you know, the, the, he just had his cap down. No one you know, no one really knew how old he was. So he had that satchel page quality to him. And the leg kick. The leg kick. Yeah. And that he turned it on in October. Like he was OK. But when come October, El Duque, sh- you know, showed up. Yeah. And he was and he was always like, oh, God, I can't deal with El Duque. If I, if I told you the story, forgive me. I'm watching the 05. Oh, White Sox? The White Sox series. Yeah. And the Red Sox got their butts kicked in game one. And then they lost because of a error in game two. And they, the one run game. But I'm thinking, all right, when, you know, this is no problem. No, no problem. Down 2 0, no problem. Win game three. Schilling's going to pitch game four. Roll the dice in game five. Okay, and that this is the series that you know the Sox, White Sox took the lead. Manny hit a pair of home runs. They loaded the bases in a one-run game. I'm like, here we go, here we go. Place went bases loaded, nobody out, down by one. Obviously, at least the game's going to be tied. Mm-hmm. And Guillen calls to the pen. I forget who the starter was. I I'm, I'm just going to assume it was Freddie Garcia. Goes to the pen, and out came El Duque. Mm-hmm. 
And I forgot El Duque was on the White Sox. Yeah. And I thought, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> you can't just bring in a Yankee at this point. <laughs> and it was like that scene in Slapshot when Paul Newman looks up and he sees the team they're playing. They stacked it with all these these ringers. I said, you're not allowed to bring in El Duque. Mm -hmm. And what does El Duque do? He gets the pop-up, the pop-up, and then the check swing from Johnny Damon. If they called it not a swing, it would have been the game-tying walk. But instead, they called it called strike three. And I remember thinking, of course it's El Duque. <laughs> of course it's El El Duque. Freaking Duque, yeah. Yep. So there you go. Is it? Uh, it always goes. Whenever you and I get together, it always goes back to these kind of memories. But that's part yeah. of it. Yeah. That's part of it. I didn't mention the year before, though. Do not. I didn't. I didn't. I look at. I praised the Yankees. I said they had a good off season. I think. I. I mean. I. Okay. Truth be told. Truth serum. I'm. I am leaning towards Toronto because yeah. I think they way underachieved last year. Yeah. And I think they're, I, I think, but I think, I think it's like one game or two games is going to separate the two. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those, unless something disastrous happens to either team, but I think it's going to be, it might be similar to the Yankees and the Orioles, the way they battled down the stretch in 2012. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That whole uh, last month was just. <laughs> and then they faced off in a really in division underrated series. division series. Yeah. Which was re a really exciting division series. Yep. Um, Which, by the way, featured the last ever Yankee postseason clinching with a complete game. Oh, CeCe yeah. Sabathia threw a complete, th complete game victory then. But because yeah. um, that was the year Rivera was hurt. Remember? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember. Soriano oh, okay. was the closer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm hmm but uh remember yeah, it well we, we remember it well yes <laughs> we, we remember it all well and do you know what i want to just thank everybody here listening for making a uh, locked on mlb your first listen every single day unless of course you're one of the locked on yankee listeners and thank you for making locked on yankees the uh, first listen every day make the other one your second listen and then your third listen because we know you're listening uh go listen to locked on mlb prospects host lindsey crosby who's going to be on the show next week uh, he's a prospect encyclopedia he's going deep on the mlb stars of tomorrow it's free and available wherever you get your podcast and talking about free and available and getting your podcast stacy gotsoulias where can people follow your show <laughs> Uh, Locked on Yankees is available on every single podcasting platform available. You can follow us at Locked on Yankees, all one word on Twitter. We're also on Instagram. I'm going to get back to posting on Instagram. And uh, I was thinking of making a Locked on Yankees TikTok. So stay tuned for that because oh, oh, that could Toledo. be funny. Well, look at, look at, by the way, by the way, under my subscriptions, see that? Very nice. Right next to Never Not Funny, which is my favorite podcast and my own podcast. So look at that. Look at, I am a subscriber. <laughs> I subscribe. Uh, follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Sully Baseball, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And please subscribe to us on YouTube. We're trying to get one billion followers. We're several hundred million short. Talking to Stacy Gotsoulias, and like we do, we get a little bit off the rails. This has been a Locked On MLB, Locked On Yankees crossover for, uh, let's just call it the 10th day of February 2023. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please, I'm begging you to call me Sully. 